time for Bottom of the Bargain Bin! What's that with a heart? <laughs> Welcome back to Bottom of the Bargain Bin. I'm your host, Kevin Hart. A wonderful holiday tradition that seems to pop up on TV quite a bit seems to be the Christmas story. A Christmas story, I should say. That is the title of the movie. The now considered a classic, as it is shown on TV pretty much every single year on Christmas 24-7 by TBS, TNT. They like to show that all the time. There was a sequel called A Christmas Story 2 that came out somewhat recently. I haven't actually seen that movie. It was also adapted into a Broadway musical that was done as one of NBC's live musicals starring Matthew Broderick. But there was another sequel, and this one came out pretty close to the original movie's release date. I'm talking about It Runs in the Family, which was later retitled to My Summer Story from 1994. This movie features none of the original cast, I believe. I don't think any of them returned, uh, except maybe some of the adult characters. And then, of course, Gene Shepard came back to do the narration. That is, I think, the only person that came back, to be honest. Lug turns you lie on me. How about you, Ralphie? Me? Yeah, Ralphie! Oh, I hated to be called Ralphie. Did you know that this movie existed? Because a lot of people didn't. Uh, a lot of people I know didn't. I didn't know this movie existed until it came on TV. There used to be a channel that was uh, one of the one of those over-the-air channels called This, which showed a lot of obscure movies owned by MGM. It was one of my favorite channels. It's unfortunately, gone away in recent, uh, just past year. But they showed this movie called A Summer Story. Uh, it might have even been titled at that point still It Runs in the Family. And I had no idea what this movie was about. It just kind of had the channel on the background and this movie came up this movie this it, it, it's like wow this narration i was with one of my friends i'm like this sounds a lot like the a christmas story this sounds like gene shepherd from a christmas story and i looked it up and yes this movie a summer story is indeed a sequel to the original christmas story and i thought well why would they make a like what are you going to try to make a sequel out of well a christmas story does come from the original book and that original book had many chapters in it uh, of course many of them had not yet been adapted into movies like a christmas story had so a christmas story 2 it runs in the family is based off one of those chapters about his summer and how much he loved dueling with tops as you saw in the last clip there in fact let me play it again where he is about to duel off against this bully who they're ch I mean nowadays we prefer them I guess as Beyblades you know let her rip Whoosh! you'd throw off the Beyblades but no they they had of course those are based on the original spinning tops that uh, these guys had what turns you lie on me how about you Ralph? me and there are also some uh, references to the original movie. You know, some of the ha 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 nostalgia bits where uh, his mom tells him he's going to shoot his eye out at one point. Ha ha ha. You know. <laughs> and uh, eh, just little things like that. It's like, oh. I think they, they even reference it at the beginning of the movie about, well, the Ice Age had gone away. Uh, you know, and he's in school. Uh, it starts off in school where he... It had yet to do his book report, and he does a book report on a very dirty book that he gets out of his uh, his dad's room that was under his bed. So uh, the teacher confronts him, and it's this scene where he basically he lies and he gets caught. But uh, it's this uh, oddly intense scene uh, at the beginning of this movie in regards to his book report. Where? Get that book home. Oh. Did you enjoy the book? No. I was definitely starting to sweat up my corduroys. Yeah. It was a pretty funny book, wasn't it? I knew that this was a loaded question. No. Well, that's good. I had guessed right. They had chosen to go with the truth, and it worked out. A long shot for sure. 
Ralphie spends most of the movie on the summer vacation. Uh, his it, one of the main big plot points is their neighbors. Um, their neighbors, the Bumpuses, who are these un, these annoying hicks, they call them. Uh, they hate their country music and all this stuff. And uh, you know, the dads just yelled at him. You know, no, nowhere near as good as the original dad from the first movie. He's yelling at him. You know, get out of my, get off of my property. And he's he's blasting classical music at them at one point. He he blasts the uh, Ride of the Valkyries at them, which. A little anachronistic, maybe. Uh, obviously, Ride of the Valkyries came out long before this movie, but, you know, using it as some sort of war cry wasn't until the movie Apocalypse Now came out. So, you know, that's just a little detail there, maybe. But uh, anyways, here's here's some of the conflict that goes on between these two neighbors. <laughs> and never you mind about my job. Where's your permit? Where's your 204-77042? Huh? I thought so. You don't have a permit to build an outdoor public convenience. You wall-eyed, citified engine. That ain't no cute conveyance out there. That there's an outhouse. Cut, clip cut off there, but... And then, uh, and then the guy uh, spits tobacco on his foot. The whole movie, they're going back and forth, and eventually, out of nowhere, the neighbors move out. No fanfare, no anything. They're just out of the neighborhood. Uh... There, there's a whole subplot with Ralphie's mom and how she's trying to... She keeps going to watch these movies. And they're like old Betty Boop cartoons they're showing in the theaters. Uh, so they're watching them so that she can get these free uh, these free kitchenettes, uh, all sorts of things. And uh, and she, she snaps near the end of the movie and she throws uh, a, a gravy... Like a gravy thing that you hold gravy in a gravy boat that's what it's called and she chucks it at this guy's head and then they all chuck the gravy boat because they all keep getting gravy boats all these women that go to this convention uh and so the 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 through line with the the uh with the tops is that ralphie just can't seem to beat this this kid he, he can't beat this kid's top he he gets a uh, a gypsy top that he gets at the uh at the expo that, that they go to the expo um and he gets this top, and it goes, uh, you know, it get, well, f- at the first, he gets an imported Chinese top, and that one loses. He gets the gypsy top from the expo, and it goes underneath the, uh, when they're, they're kind of dueling in the streets there, uh, in, the st- in the streets, uh, you know, like outside of school, uh, you know, they're all in a circle. And the tops, both of them, uh, and they don't fall over, but they end up going into this drainage, uh, you know, down into the sewer, and like that's it. And he's like, "It's a draw," and he's so mad. And that's that. And but there's this really sweet moment where uh, Ralphie's with his dad, and his dad's like, "Well, I used to play with tops when I was younger, and I made him out of clay." And I, I really thought that there was going to be a moment where, you know, he keeps losing, and then his dad gives him the clay top, and like that's the one that beats it. See, that would have been a really good moment, but uh, instead they opted to just, you know, kind of leave it at that. And the the movie doesn't really really go anywhere after that. There's a through line of fishing as well. Ralphie keeps going fishing with his dad, and. You know, like at the end of the Christmas of a Christmas story where you know they want to eat the big the big feast and the dog gets it and they end up going to the, eat Chinese food they, they end up eating fish at the end of this and yeah I thought there was gonna be some sort of thing with the fish but instead they just catch the fish and they eat it and he's like I'll remember that summer always and that's how the movie ends it's pretty boring and for a movie that is 80 minutes long it moves at a snail's pace, and it was hard to get through. Not that it was bad or anything, but it's just kind of eh. It, it's you know, it's something as iconic as a Christmas story, and you make a sequel to it. It's, it's just it's it's hard to follow up. So I, I really it, it, some of the performances are okay um, for what it is. It, it's fine, I guess. What I didn't know was what a big cult following this movie has, and I mean, not as big as the original Christmas story, which I don't know if you even call that a cult following now. I mean, I think it's just a Christmas classic now because it's shown on TV all the time and so many people love it and can quote it and there's so many memorable lines and characters. But this movie, you know, when, I, when I looked it up on YouTube, when I saw the trailer and clips from it, there are all sorts of comments saying, I love this movie growing up. This is such an underrated movie. There's, you know, video essays about how it's an underrated movie. So 
it has an audience. Uh, there's definitely some funny moments in it, and I, you know, it was unexpected at uh, ha- how much people like this movie. I didn't personally. I didn't think it was that good of a movie. Uh, I think you'd be better off watching a Christmas Story or even the the musical version that NBC put on uh, before you watch this. It's just kind of boring. It's it's not like it's on TV, like you're some sort of captive audience sitting there watching it with your family. I mean, you have to actively... I, I found it on TV. I didn't watch the whole thing. I didn't watch it the whole thing until this week. But, you know, you have to actively look out this movie. Like, look, like, look out to find it. And when you watch it, it's just kind of underwhelming. So, I wouldn't recommend this movie at all. I don't think it's terrible. Definitely not the worst movie I've seen, uh, even from the movie reviews I've been doing on Let's Talk Arts and Entertainment. So... Yeah, this movie's not that great, but, well, it's a sequel you did not know existed to a Christmas classic. And that is, again, A Summer Story, or It Runs in the Family. Thank you so much for watching or listening to Bottom of the Bargain Bin. I am your host, Kevin Hart, and we will do this again next time.